I have the great pleasure now of being joined by Dr. Felice Schnoll Sussman, who is moderating the ASGE Symposium here at DDW on performing the perfect EMR. And there are lots of tools and techniques here that you're going to be talking sure, about. Sure, there are. So there's a lot of varieties of way to do endoscopic mucosal resection or EMR. And during the session, we're going to discuss the different pearls uh, at doing EMR and also how you would approach this in different areas uh, in the GI tract. For instance, you can do EMR in the colon, at the ampulla, in the stomach, and the esophagus. And the goal is to try to understand really how to tackle those different areas based upon the techniques and tools that we have in our armamentarium. And it's very challenging to figure out the, the follow-up time for patients to make sure that you really got the job done. Sure. The key to doing this, I mean, this is a fantastic technique that has really aided us in our management of early cancers. And the key though, the key to success is really making sure that you get a complete resection. So at the time of the EMR, it is it behooves you to actually look to make sure are the edges complete. After you're done with the EMR, it's very important to work with a pathologist that's capable of looking at the edges of the specimen itself. And even, even handling the EMR in certain institutions is very important. So some places want you to actually take the specimen and tack it down so that they're able to look at the edges of the specimen. Other institutions, that's not quite as important, but the key is making sure you've got it all out. So bringing the patient back afterwards to evaluate post-EMR is also important. If you feel perhaps you did not get the whole specimen, one should bring the patient back very early in the course of surveillance, perhaps just several weeks afterwards, to either do additional EMRs of the edges or even apply techniques such as argon plasma coagulation to get rid of the additional tissue. I know one of the things that is pretty challenging is patients who are on blood thinners. So when do you start those up again and how do you kind of monitor and yes. manage that? Yeah, blood thinners are the bane of existence for gastroenterologists doing techniques like this. And clearly there are some patients that need to be on a blood thinner because of their comorbidities. I think this really involves having a a really open discussion with the patient and their other care providers. For instance, if the patient has a heart condition that necessitates being back on a blood thinner, then you have to put the patient back on and you can just monitor them. But there are some patients, obviously, that the indications are softer. And if you do do a big resection, if the resection itself involved actually um, some blood and you felt that it was the higher risk of the lesion being taken out, then perhaps you can actually extend the time period the person is off of the blood thinner. I know one of the things that you're going to be discussing is the idea about not being intimidated. Go ahead and do this. And that is uniquely what's available through DDW are these training sessions that can really help people. That's correct. You know, at this point in time, this really should be something that is in the hands of every gastroenterologist. So if you're capable of doing a routine snare palpectomy, you're actually able to do EMR. I think some people, especially if they're further out from training, may feel intimidated by this technique. What is EMR? There's actually nothing mysterious about this. But if you feel that your skill sets are not up to the level of doing it, there are many opportunities at national meetings to be able to work with experts in the field in hands-on training where you can go for just several hours and really be able to look at the technique, look at the tools, and actually increase your skill set to be able to do this in your practice. So even beyond this meeting for people who weren't able to attend, there are plenty of opportunities to learn about this because I think the takeaway message is do it and figure out how to do it correctly. I agree. I think the key thing is if an individual is actually doing routine polypectomy in their practice, they can do an EMR technique. There are many opportunities to be able to learn this, not just at this meeting, but other national meetings, local regional meetings, and one could uh, go to a hands-on session, work side by side with an expert to be able to gain familiarity with the technique, with the tools, and how they can apply this in their practice. Okay, Dr. Schmelz-Sussman, thank you so much. Thank you so much.